Hiya, yeah. Dave here. I thought this was a good time to review the Esheen E180. It's been in my hands now about five months and I've easily gotten over 60 flights in it. Um, I'm an absolute novice, still learning to fly helicopters, so this isn't some sort of professional review of how super capable this is. This is sort of, is this a good first helicopter to get? Particularly with the new E150 about to hit the market as I'm making this. Um, it's just interesting to compare the two, looking at the specs, and see how this stacks up. I, I, I bought this as my very first helicopter, and there's something interesting in that. I did research and research, and this seemed to be great. And also, when I purchased it, and then I thought, uh, from more research, that maybe it isn't so great, and maybe it isn't so accurate, and maybe the OMP Hobby M1 or M2 should be better, or some other helicopter. And in essence, one thing I've actually learned is there can't be such thing as too much information. Do your research, and if the thing stacks up, maybe go with it. There is one guru in this, in this market, it's John Salt. If you're looking for one source for the best information and guidance, check out John Salt. As for all the other bits and pieces, this is to talk about those other bits and pieces. Uh, interestingly, price point, this 180, it seems now is going to be dearer than the 150, logically enough. But that's happening in part because they've jacked up the price of the 180. It used to be dearer, they're now pricing it. Um, to be more expensive than the 150 and the 150 started pitching in where this used to be at a sale price. Uh, this is obviously going to be a little bit larger from what I understand. I have it down here. The diameter of this is 410 millimeters. The 150 is 350 millimeters and for comparison the M1 is 290 millimeters rotor diameter. So this is bigger than the 150. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be more robust. This has taken a huge amount of damage from me in multiple parts and to be quite honest it's amazing how little it has taken to fix it. The skids in particular which is one thing that's going to you know be an advantage with the 150 they are flexible these are not. I've had to do a lot to repair it. The tail motor this has got caught even the guide rail back here I've had to sort of jimmy up some type of compromise, but they were all small things. And when I consider that this was planted into the ground, as in, you know, that whole scenario where you get your pitch upside down, so I forcibly planted this down into the ground instead of rising up. It's, it's done a lot of that sort of stuff. Other things to watch out for with the 180 is the battery. I, again, being an office, you always think you should get more flight time than what you actually do. In reality, these batteries are good for about three and a half minutes. If you go over that, you run them down beyond a rechargeable level. And when I bought a three pack, I now have two useless batteries. I'm down to one, which fits inside the canopy, meaning you have to take off the canopy, which is a bit of a nuisance. But I managed to replace it with these cheap Turnagy batteries, which are larger, but they're a bit more durable, and the heavy has no problem carrying them. I literally tuck it in, I tuck it in underneath here with some velcro and secure it and that works very well. They're cheap because these types of batteries seem to be really quite pricey. So that's a great alternative for me. What other points did I make? If you're looking at your camera, or if you're looking at your first helicopter, do I regret getting a 180, an Ishin 180 as a first helicopter? Well, no I don't. But it would have been smarter to have bought the likes of an XKK 110 and do all your practice, all your learning maneuvers with that. And then when you have a reasonable level of comfort in just, you know, you're starting out with your figure of eight, you're starting out with your low rates, your higher rates, even maybe gyro on and off. Do all that with your cheapy K110. That will take damage very, very well. Make your mistakes with a cheapy 110 and then on the same day pull this out and more cautiously fly this. This is a desperate buzz. You, you're absolutely guaranteed a rush of adrenaline with this. In, I found uh, it makes more noise, it revs faster, There's, it has more presence. I'd love if it was orange or a, a more visible colour in the sky. This doesn't particularly stand out, but it's buckets of fun to fly. I would also say it can be tamed right down to be a lovely beginner's helicopter 
and it can be ramped right up to give you the most aggressive moves you want. I'm still in the learning phase and if there's one thing I learned compared to flying heli flying airplanes is that you learn much more slowly. There's no point rushing into all the all the fancy maneuvers. You will the price to pay is huge. Um, they're not as forgiving as learning to fly airplanes, so just learn slowly. Even at this stage, my 50, 60 flights, yes, I can do loops, I can fly inverted for very short periods of time, I can barely, barely manage a tic-tac, tic-tac, whatever it is, barely. Um, and I've only learned in the last time to slow it down, stop trying to move to the next trick, stop, just enjoy it. I'm finding now I'm having so much fun with this idling up and just swinging her like a pendulum, you know, and then roll around gently and just... There's bits to this more than just doing outright acrobatics. This will do it for you, but it, you don't need to go straight to that point. And that comes back to this thing, you know, is it your best first helicopter? Well, see, this will fly wonderfully gently when, you're, when, when all your settings are dialed down for gentle flying. The only reason I would say maybe not the best first helicopter is that because it is so capable and you will feel, I felt so comfortable so quickly that I wanted to go straight into trying inverted. I wanted to go into the loops. So because this was so capable, I was actually progressing too, too soon for my ability. So that's why, you know, I would recommend you go with Alexia 110. Learn as much as you can on that. Bring the two helicopters out each day, but do all the grafting and the mistakes and the learning the muscle memory of your fingers on the likes of a 110 that will take the drops better than, than this, even though this is so forgiving. And then move on to this. Uh, so I suppose I'll just take I'll just check my notes here. One one final thing, you know, which is which is likely to be better, the 180 or the 150? Or if you have a 180, is it worth buying a 150? Well, in short, I think the answer is no. If you have 180 and you've copped up any bit of experience, you're going to have gone past inflicting all of the damage that, that's been inflicted on this. So you're, you, you're not going to be quite concerned about robustness. The 150 is better built to take knocks. You might have seen the videos where, you know, where the skids flex and everything like that. It's, it's designed to be a little bit more uh, beginner friendly. So to that end, that's fine. So if it's your first helicopter and you want to go straight to the likes of these e-sheens, the 150 is the way to go. If you have 180, in my experience, and I don't know much, as I've said, I'm no professional, but from the little bit I've been doing, I don't see the value in forking out a good chunk of money on a 150 when this, it, in my hand, seems to be every bit as capable and possibly more capable than the 150 is. So, uh, taking notice of the videos there, I just had that going in the past, we go, I just had that in the background. All you're seeing really is this hovering around the place and doing some basic maneuvers. It's, it, 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 I put it up there to, as much for you to sort of say, hey, what's this about, this is boring, as to re reiterate the point I made earlier, that just take your time, learn slowly, don't rush in to this um, desire to do all the acrobatic moves too soon. It, as I said, the cost of, of getting around is just very, very high. Um, you can be lucky like I was, but you could be less lucky as well, snapping booms or something more structural. So take your time and happy flying.